Welcome to the first video for homebarista.com. Uh, we've had requests in the past to you know, provide this sort of information in a video format, so we're going to give it a try. And for the first series, uh, we're going to do an uh, introduction for espresso newbies. And for my uh, first video, we're going to do a session with a friend of mine, uh, Philip, who is new to espresso and has agreed to be kind of a, a newbie uh, on video. So what we're going to do is to introduce uh, Philip to espresso is go through a series of drinks uh, that are popular in the United States and in, in Italy. Uh, starting from uh, the largest one, which is milk-based a latte. We're going to skip a cappuccino, but, uh, but uh, for time reasons, but this is also a, a big favorite, having about six ounces or so. And then another drink, which is less popular, but switches the center stage of a latte, which is primarily for milk, into uh, one that focuses on coffee. And then finally, we'll finish with espresso. And the idea of this exercise is to give uh, a chance for Philip, who's kind of a, a typical American coffee drinker, a chance to experience a range of different coffees from the familiar uh, to, the, to the less familiar, and hopefully develop a taste appreciation in doing so. Uh, so there's my introduction. Uh, uh, Philip, you wanna say a few words? Uh, I'm, I'm the guinea pig here, so uh, looking forward to uh, trying it out and uh, seeing what this stuff actually uh, does. What's your typical sort of you know, coffee regime? I mean, you're a coffee drinker, right? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I love all types of coffee. Um, Starbucks, uh, usually... Uh, you gotta be careful when you say <laughs> that. Those, those are fighting words. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Cafe Latte is a big fan of. I have a Keurig at home, so I guess your typical, you know, I'm definitely not a... Uh, uh, I'm an expert on this. That's fine. Um, do you use typically drink coffee black or do you have it with sugar? Or actually, you milk? I prefer a little milk and sugar. Okay, great. Well, you know, for this purpose is actually we're going to be skipping the sugar. All right. uh, but the idea is that uh, keep in mind sugar, at least in, in typically, is used as in some regards as kind of a masking agent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. you know, it can be used to enhance the drink. Yeah. But, you know, I would argue it's often used to cover up for otherwise bitter coffee. Gotcha. You're not going to be having any bitty co bitter coffee, uh, awesome. coffee today, and so we're going to skip that. The sweetness is going to be provided by the milk, Okay. you see? So, and as we approach this, it is going to be have, you know, it's not going to be sweet like a, a candy bar, yeah. sort of sweet. Yeah. But you're going to see that it's still going to not be bitter, yeah. okay? And that's kind of the goal. Okay. So, okay, with that introduction, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with a latte. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do a, a quick pour. I'm not going to bother with latte art. This is strictly about taste today. My latte art is, is pretty pathetic anyway, so I'll, I'll, I'll give it a little attempt, but I won't show it to anyone else but you. Okay, so here you go. Alright. I get the taste? Yeah, I'm taking a lot of your taste, and I'm going to go ahead and here's a quick way of verifying the milk was correct. So what you're looking for when you make a good latte is does it have a texture, does it have sweetness, yeah. does it have uh, an interesting coffee flavor. But the flavor of the coffee, like in this one we serve, this is Toscano, the primary coffee flavor for that is kind of a chocolate, maybe a little a nutty sort of flavor to yeah. it. But it's very subtle, right? It's fantastic. Great, great. <laughs> mm. and, <clears throat> It's very interesting what you said about the sugar, mm -hmm. because there's no sugar in this. But no, it, there's no it sugar. It has a sweet, I mean, I don't know if it's a sweet, but it, it doesn't need sugar. I could drink this without sugar. Exactly. Absolutely. You see, what, what the key to that is, is that um, when you, when milk is properly steamed, mm -hmm. it actually becomes sweeter in that process. Now, there's a big, long yeah. chemical explanation for why that happens. Yeah. But if I served you microwaved milk, mm -hmm. microwaved to one temperature, and then I prepared it this way, the exact same temperature, mm -hmm. the one would taste like I'd added about a half a teaspoon of sugar to it. Oh, wow. Now, I don't know why that is. There's a big, long explanation. I've read it before, but, but you're correct. That's exactly right. Okay, so that was the introduction of the cappuccino, or I'm sorry, the lattes. We're going to skip the cappuccinos and move straight to macchiato. So that way we're changing from center stage lattes to center stage coffee. And so, uh, getting right on that. Great. Oh, you want to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that in the video. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, wow. 
that good? Yeah. All right. We're gonna go ahead and make a macchiato. Uh, it's gonna have a little about maybe about an ounce, ounce and a half of espresso, ounce, ounce and a half of, of milk. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. And here again, you can see, you know, it's got a lot of rich colors to it. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to see is uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of that tiger stripe and such. And if you look at this, you'll see this time, you see how it's kind of like a paint-like texture. Mm -hmm. And when I do that back and forth, you end up with a kind of like a, a rolling lump there. Mm -hmm. That's how you can, you know, help mix it, but also verify the thickness is correct. Okay. So there we go. And now I'm going to pour this really kind of slow because what I want to do is I want to emphasize the foam at the top. So see how it start out with a bunch of foam at the top? Yep. There. So now this one's going to be quite a contrast to the last one. Okay. At least we hope so. Oh yeah, very different. Right. So you know, the idea though is you still want to have the sweetness of milk. Yep. It's still going to have that. And you see, I intentionally poured it where I left a rim of yep. coffee around it. So that way you yep. get an initial burst mm -hmm. of kind of like that chocolateness. Mm -hmm. But then as you keep slipping along, you get that creaminess from the center That's of foam. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that way you can produce a nice contrast. Yep. So there you go. That's uh, step two, uh, macchiato. And now we go to the, uh, to the peak, to the mountain, as it were, where it all started. We'll do a straight espresso. Awesome. So now that we're off camera, what do you think? <laughs> it's good, it's strong. I mean, yeah. that's the biggest difference, is you yeah. can tell, like, this, you can drink this whole thing. That's right. why this is so small. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's because... Well, I should, you know, this is going to be interesting because, you know, we're going we're gonna to increase the intensity oh, by, yeah. by, 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 by a factor of three. Yeah. You know, For, so... From this one to the next one? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you know? And, and actually, that's what this whole test. This video is going to get quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what this test was really about. Is is that um, you know by a more gentle introduction? Yeah. You know, can we introduce someone to to well to, to well made espresso? Yeah. In a way that is approachable. Yeah. That's really what this this whole video is supposed to be about. Okay. So once again, this is the uh, the exact same ratio as we did before. Nothing's changed. The only time is, is that now we're going to pour it directly and drink it directly. It's going to be a little bit of a shock compared yep. to what we're used to because uh, before the intensity of an espresso has been masked by 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 the milk, uh -huh. right? And if you use the analogy when you drink strong alcohols, yeah, uh, if you draw drink a liquor, uh, very often they're mixed with you know I don't know uh, soda or whatever they're mixed with something. Sure. And part of the reason they do that is is to make it a bit less shocking yeah. to to your palate, yeah. right? And it makes it more approachable for yeah. a wider audience. But you know, you know as well as I, there's plenty of people who love things like you know straight whiskeys or bourbons or tequilas oh, yeah. or whatever, right? Absolutely. But it's really rare for someone to start that. Right. Know, for their first time drinking, mm -hmm. it'd be usually when they start wine, for example, they might start with a sweeter wine or a yeah. white wine or maybe a, a Zinfandel or something like that. Yep. And over the course of years, they will move on to drier wines. The same sort of, of progression occurs in espresso. Gotcha. We're just compressing it into 15 minutes. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Years into 15 minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we are using the same espresso that we use for a latte, we use for a macchiato, and now for a straight espresso. And one consequence of that is, is that when you use you know, eight ounces of milk or even you know, any milk for that matter is, is that you have to create a taste balance between the two. Mm -hmm. That can be tricky because if you make it too strong, mm -hmm. uh, it'll be difficult to drink straight, but mm -hmm. it'll be just right for a latte. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of roasters really struggle with that balance. And so subsequently, 
This one is actually going to be perhaps a little bit stronger than you would might drink if you were drinking it just straight. Okay. I'm going to intentionally emphasize sweetness on this okay. to try and compensate for that. I'm going to pull a little bit shorter, which will increase the sweetness. It'll also make it a little more intense. So it's a, it's a little tricky balance. Okay. When we get into the next video, and it's going to be all straight espresso, mm -hmm. I'm going to use a blend which is traditionally served that way. And Perfect. so it won't have this problem. So that was more of just a heads up for you that it might be a little stronger. It's going to be quite a progression going up. Awesome. So hold on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so give this a shot. All right. <laughs> there you go. Okay. It's fantastic. Really? Yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, but I mean, yeah. I mean, how do you describe it though? Well, <clears throat> um, I, I, it took me. I went to Italy once, and, okay. I, and I had espresso for the first time, and uh, I guess Italian. And uh, it was one of those that you feel like you, you were drinking coffee before it actually hit your lips. Yeah. You know, you can just the smells and everything. But it's um, very strong. Yeah. Um, well, this particular blend that you're trying has a strong emphasis on chocolates and nuts. Mm -hmm. okay, that's kind of the emphasis. There's going to be a little bit of roast in there. Yeah. A little bit of roast notes going in. But as you get further into the hobby, a lot of times people tend to get more towards brighter, fruitier, you know, uh, more interesting, really, yeah. because this one is is really kind of a one note sort of blend okay. in the sense that you know it basically hits you with a booming chocolate boom like that. Gotcha. When we get into the second video, I'm going to intentionally switch to one that has a bit more fruitiness, in it. so you'll get a chance to challenge your palate. Okay. So there we go. There we've done it now. Uh, three drinks in in three minutes or thereabouts, right? Yeah. Maybe a little longer. Yeah. But in any case, uh, that was uh, the progression. Look forward to the next in the series of uh, newbie introduction to espresso. Great. Awesome.